Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Pillars of Eternity with me, Bracketon. I'm gonna head back to Defiance Bay, specifically Brackenbury for the Sanitarium. We have Aloth's Quest and potentially a Leaden Key lead there. Take care of our next construction project. The Curio Shop. The Curio Shop trades in Oddball Curiosities. It allows you to purchase the parts of exotic creatures and generates a random creature part every turn in the Stronghold Treasury. Sounds good. Huh. Alright, let's go to the Sanitarium. I'll start by talking to the statue. I believe his rank is Headmaster. Sure. A head warden. Well met, friend. Ah, the Watcher. What brings you here? Are you the Animancer who's been buying relics from Emmatil? It's a large and rather notorious black market for uncatalogued Ingwithin relics. I stay far away from it. Does anyone here know anything about Awakenings? As an animancer on the lower floor, who came all the way from Revoa to study them. Take the stairs down and look for Belisage. You may have a member of the Leaden Key in your midst. Ethelmore groans, and the stone around him shudders. I could have done without hearing that today. Many have their intrusions been into our affairs. Of course, one can seldom be certain whether they've meddled or whether Calamity has struck on its own. But a few of their less skilled infiltrators have been exposed from time to time. They are a perpetual nuisance. Once again, I'm reminded of how heavy I am of your gifts. I suspect they would be of some use in verifying one's identity. You're at odds with the leaden key as well, I take it. They're up to something, and I'm trying to determine what. They are always up to something. Of that you may rest assured. Their plots have come to involve you. You have my sympathies. You have some idea of who this person might be. I suspect it's a patient. Very well. In that case, I'd recommend you speak first with our resident animancers. They have frequent interactions with both patients and colleagues. You can find them up here or in their offices downstairs. You report anything suspicious to me immediately. This is my only request. Okay. Start with the named guys up here. Greetings. Uh, do you know anything about Awakenings? I'm afraid that's not my area of expertise. Fair enough. Dan's regards you with bright, intelligent eyes. Can I help you with something? What do you know about Awakenings? Not much, I'm afraid. But the sanitarium attracts experts from all over. I'm sure someone here can help you out. I'm investigating possible leaden key activity in the sanitarium. Seen anything suspicious? Oh, I'm afraid I'm too wrapped up in my own research to pay any mind to what else is going on around here. One of the other animancers might know something, though. I think that's it for the named NPCs up here. It's time to head down below. Good day, stranger. Mojo looks up from his scroll. Yes? Helig is dead. For good. Mojo lets out a long breath. And I can rest easy. You've done a great service for Animancy, for the sanitarium, and for me. Thank you. Are you the Animancer who's been buying relics from Emmatil? Who? I don't have time to barter with adventurers, if that's what this is about. 
I'm looking for an expert on awakenings. I hear that Valian woman studies them. You should go talk to her instead. Has anything unusual been happening around here? You must be joking. This is the sanitarium. Nothing is usual down here. He pauses. Although, now that I think of it, the patients seem more agitated lately. But they're Cademan Azo's responsibility, not mine. Hundred nods, taking a deep breath. Then, there's nothing else. No, just looking around. Of course, take your time. I'll talk to the Bella Sage next. That's something else you need. Are you the Animancer who's been buying relics from Emmatil? From what? I do not know this place. I'm looking for an expert on awakenings. He laughs bitterly. Ack, that would be me. But the lack of research subjects has made me more of an expert in counting floorboards. I like to transfer Animancy's success in buttressing pre-awakened souls to soothing those whose souls have already awakened. But I need subjects. And most of the patients here are too broken to produce reliable results. It is a tragedy. we have come so far for nothing. Well, you're in luck. I have a volunteer. She springs to the balls of her feet, beaming. Gilarde, who is it? Alas's lips curl into a frown. I don't know about this. He grins more broadly still. Don't be silly. The process is perfectly harmless. All you must do is stand in that cage. Ha <laughs> ha. I beg your pardon. I jest. Your adherents are so uptight. I do not even know what the thing is used for. It belonged to the last occupant of this office, I think. Now they upgrade him to a cell. Again, I jest. She rubs her hands together, getting down to business. So, I need you to sit here. She takes Aloth by the shoulders and steers him to the couch. And try to relax. But don't try too hard. Then he would not be relaxing. Indeed. His eyes are humorless. He must also wear these. A little cold, but the copper will help conduct your essence. The Animancer fastens thick copper bands to Alos' forehead and wrists. As she ratchets them tighter, his face twitches with suppressed irritation. Now, I examine your soul through my scope. She reaches into her desk and produces a long, chambered tube. Knobs, dials, and small toothed wheels run along the side of the device. It is fitted with Adra lenses, cut to different thicknesses and concavities. By manipulating them, I find the angles and densities that will allow me to track the anomalies in your soul. Does this mean we'll get to talk to Isilmir, Isilmir more? I like that lady. <laughs> she raises a finger. But first, we must find this cunning interloper. You answer some personal questions while I make adjustments. Good luck. You have an easier time getting straight answers out of a drunk priest of wile. Aloth squirms on the couch. Very well. She holds a scope to her eye and flicks at it a knob. To begin, tell me something personal. Something from a time before your awakening. There's nothing to tell. I was just a normal child living in the... Hithwood? He looks to you. His face is set in a frown but the rigid edges of apprehension show through nevertheless. Now talk about your parents. As you speak to Aloth, you feel your voice like a bell in your chest. It tolls softly, luring him into the mist of his own memory. Abella Sage doesn't seem to notice anything, but you feel as if your words are smoothing his essence, untangling its many threads. He closes his eyes. Mother is away most of the time, with the Thane's family. But I always know when she is coming home. Father's bottles accumulate like storm clouds on the horizon. His fits of temper become swifter and more violent. It still shames him, knowing that her... Aimneg? To another man supports us better than his labors as a steward. This is good. I am starting to see... something. Continue. Tell us about the time you awakened. She bites her tongue as she twists one of the dials. I'm in my fifth year of training. Mother is home. I can let my guard down a little, because when she is around, he is usually only angry with her. But he has heard that I have had trouble casting missiles, that my flame shields are unstable. He is furious that I have failed, and Mother's presence reminds him that he has failed too. The 
first blow takes me by surprise. One moment I am sweeping the kitchen, the next I am sprawled on the ground, stupidly looking at flecks of my blood on the tile. His boots, glistening with fresh polish, thud across the floor. He kicks me in the stomach, and I curl up to shield my vitals. But it's pointless. Protecting one thing only leaves something else exposed. Still huddled on the ground, I retreat as fast as I can. I retreat into the vision of the kitchen, and my own trembling knees is nothing but a pinprick against a field of black. His jaw locks, and his eyes twitch beneath their lids. Mariko. Felicite furiously cranks the knobs along her scope. He hypnotized himself with, his old, with this old memory. You've got to bring him out of it. Quickly, I must have it. This is just a memory. It isn't real. Alice's eyes snap open, but the expression you see in them isn't his. And what about those rattles you see in the space twixt your ears? They real... real enough for ye? <laughs> Millisage sucks a deep breath through her teeth. That's it. I'm seeing a shift in his essence. Something spreading and congealing. He glances at you over her scope. Keep talking. He seems to respond to you. What brought you here? Breaking bones and voices high in ire. That warm molasses feeling that trips down your gut when crisis is nigh. That's different. Alfetto, we have flares of a totally distinct essence. She jots shorthand notes onto the pages next to her, turns one clicking knob of her scope. Now, gotta get the two of them talking. Aloth, ask Esselmir what she's doing. Alice's face twists in fury, sticking weed, warming parasite. He bursts into sudden laughter. You'd say the same to your own kindled twig when it betrays you. Adair grins. Must be hard to avoid knowing there's a lady in your body the whole time judging you. <laughs> good, yes, very good. She rests from her scribbling, only to make another adjustment to her scope. I can now see two separate patterns of essence. Where he ebbs, the other flows. It's as if the awakened soul fills the space that he leaves empty. She prompts you with the circling of her wrist. Will still in hand. Go on. Aloth, what's this about ceding space to Isselmir? He grits his teeth painfully. I've given her nothing. He usurps me in my own body. Aye, I'll lend him a pair too. Should ask uh, what I did that old man of his. Uh, the last time he laid a hand on us, I break it in three places. Aloth's head jerks to the side. That wasn't your decision. It's never been your decision. I was awakening, but I'm stuck with ye, and darn if I let your ninnying drag us both through the scupper. Ack, very good. He lowers her scope and consults her notes. I think I finally got something we can work with. I've tracked Isselmir's essence throughout the exchange. She had a particularly high density index during the most heated portions of their argument, and her essence seems to localize the most clearly in the lower portion of the subject's left ribcage. That's right around the spleen, which of course means that she is triggered by black bile. No doubt the subject's characteristic melancholy is to blame. Aloth blinks back at you, and in the midst of his perturbation, you're not quite sure who's looking out of his eyes. That's utter, utter horse crap. How gracious. She glares at him. Yes, never mind my years of training. I suppose you have a better explanation. Isselmir manifests when Aloth is in danger or under pressure. Bellisage carefully scratches her jaw, her gaze darting between you and Aloth. I suppose that could be true. She jots another note. I have to check this against other research. He removes the copper bands. Well, good, well and good for you. But what does this mean for me? Bellisage frowns at her notes, tapping her cheek with a quill making a grand show of concentration. However, you catch her stealing a glance at you over the pages. Esomir tries to take control from you when she thinks you can't face a problem on your own. You can't let her make these des decisions for you. My thoughts exactly. 
I have to be more careful about her from now on. I've got a lot to process. Regardless, thank you for your help, Donald. He does not look at Bella Sage. She sets her notes on her desk and returns to her scope. Well, I hope this has been as useful to you as it has been to me. I finally have material worth publishing. It could be the Toast of Revoir, Ventre Aloth. His grimace melts into a crooked smile. Aye, advancing the right wise principles of animancy. Just what you've always wanted. As you turn to leave, you catch a darting movement out of the corner of your eye. Bella Sage is humming to herself, still occupied with her scope, but Aloth is holding her notes. He's just about to tuck them into his cloak when he catches you watching. He holds a finger to his lips, his eyes wide and imploring. Please, I don't want my personal information published like this, especially not after her nonsense. Yeah, leave me out of this. <laughs> he hides the papers in his cloak. Night to worry. We'll see to this on our own. Yeah. Hi? Alright, let's have a chat with him real quick. About your parents. He looks at you cautiously. Yes? Why was your mother gone so often? She was invited to join a Hameneg. I'm saying that right. With a landed thing when I was very young. His estate was a five day ride from our home in the Kithwood. That was part of it. it. Gives you the smallest of frowns. The real issue, however, was my father. Despite his initial agreement with the arrangement, father was never happy with it. He would hound and wrong my mother when she was home. He wanted to know whether she was intimate with the Thane, and no matter how many times she swore she wasn't, it was never enough. As you can imagine, it led to her coming home much less often, even though she still supported us financially. I'm sure she was trying to take care of you in her own way. I believe so. She had an important role managing the Lord Thane's lands and administrative duties. And even though she was away, she provided well for us. It sounds like your father had a problem with his temper. He had a problem with my mother's Hameneg. Even though they agreed upon it long ago, the financial benefits would be considerable, that it was little different from his role as the Earl Steward, it aided him. And so he drank and raged. When she was home, he raged at her, and when she wasn't, he raged at me. More than anything, he wanted me to become an arcane knight in the service of his Earl. I think he felt this would validate his chosen career and master. He was a firm man, as you saw, but in the end, I became a successful wizard, do no small part to his strictness. In nonsense, you accomplished that on your own, and you would have been fine without him pushing you. Are you so certain? I didn't know what I wanted for my life then. I surely wouldn't have been so focused without a little direction. What's a Hameneg? A ceremonial marriage between folk and elf, because the Adir mainland has historically been split between the two races. We have many institutions that are designed to normalize relations. Our monarchy is headed by folk, but an elven consort rules alongside the reigning Ferconing, or Maequeen. This is the most prominent example of Hame Hameneg. In many cases, a Hameneg allows two households to pull resources. Among the aristocracy, Hamenegs consolidate power. Sometimes, as in my mother's case, a Hameneg is a means for a noble to add another administrator to his or her household. Consorts are received with almost the same level of respect as their noble counterparts, which can be extremely useful. Of course, Hamnags are sometimes used to sanitize an extramarital affair. He shrugs. I don't know if that's really any better, but it seems to satisfy a common notions of decency. And elfin folk unions are sterile, which no doubt eases some concerns. That's all I really wanted to know. He looks relieved. Very well. So... Now you understand a little more about Isomir. He wrinkles his nose. No thanks to that Animancer. My spleen? Black bile? Come on. LSH's methods were flawed, but you still learned something, didn't you? Only because you and I have a lick of good sense between us. But the average person? Throw them a shiny gadget in the hands of an expert, and they'll believe anything.
That's true. People are too easily led. Yes. People need something to believe. Something to follow. And the danger of following a bunch of animancers is that even though they don't know where they... Is that even they don't know where they're headed. They put emphasis on the right word there. And I confused myself. Now why did you want to take Bella Sage's notes? He gives you a sidelong glance. Like I said, I didn't appreciate her prying. Sure. Did I go against my contract with her? Because we agreed to let her keep the notes. Which I wasn't the one that broke the contract. Aloth did. See and tear, but I am busy. I seem to have misplaced my notes. I'll have it in no time. The work of a moment. Note from Azo. Ripley. Require more copper tubing for my next experiment. Do not requisition it from the sanitarium stores. I'll have the time to deal with the head warden's inevitable questions. Aidman Azo. I'm gonna take. Huh? North Ward patient. Record, Patixa the Pale Lady. Subject is female, mid-40s. Awakened to a past life as a serial murderer, which now frequently emerges as the soul's dominant personality. A subject vacillates between violence and severe depression, resulting from guilt of past deeds. Weak candidate for present research. North Ward patient, record, Graham. Or Grom. Subject is a male, approximately early 30s. Powers of speech absent, presumably as a result of the overfragmentation of his soul. As such, he's the ideal subject for present research. However, experimentation has caused severe pain and induced panic. They've had to enlist the aid of the guards in transporting him for more recent procedures. North Ward patient, record, Idleman, the Midnight Man. Subject is male, mid-twenties. Displays acute dis dissociation and paranoid delusional tendencies causing anger and extreme violence. Dangers of working with the subject preclude possibility of further use in present research. Northward patient record, Usgrim. Subject is a male, approximately 17 years of age. Admitted for episodes of catatonia, followed by occasional violent outbursts. Initial analysis of soul revealed severe fragmentation and essence of deficiency. Sorry, an essence deficiency. Said deficiency all but eliminates the possibility of utilizing the subject in present research. Hmm. Welcome. The young Orlan woman traces her fingers along the spines of the books in front of her, row by row, her motions quick and skittish, like a bird's. She does not notice you until you are nearly upon her. Oh my, you startled me. Are you supposed to be in here? Are you the animancer who's been buying relics from Emmatil? I'm not an animancer, so no. But I do know that most of those relics are stolen from ruins in Irglanfoth. Selling them is illegal. If there's nothing else, I need to get back to work. I'm looking for an expert on awakenings. Me? I'm just Master Azo's assistant. But there's a visiting scholar from Revoir here named Bella Sage. She claims to know about them. What do you do here? I mostly help Master Azo set up and clean his equipment. I also keep his office organized, since he's too busy to do it himself. Right. Alright, I guess that's what we need to go talk to... Ethel Moore. I suppose he'll give us the key to confront Azo. Assuming that he's behind that locked door. Hail, Traveler! Have you learned anything of interest? I found records that Azo may be running some questionable experiments. Experiments? Him and Azo's in charge of patient welfare now. He's not authorized to run any more experiments. I am disappointed in Cademan. 
I had hoped he would be the one to guide your inquiry. He'll be in his office or in the patient wards. I am granting you immediate access so you can find him. No doubt you will wish to speak to him further on this matter. And I for one am curious as to what he might have to say. Read carefully in the wards. There are a few dangerous cases. I would ask also that you do, not do your best not to agitate the patients. They have enough troubles as it is. Right, see what I can do. Oh, I have another quest. Uh, the Skybreaker rewards 15% experience, Rod of Wind and Thunder, and a minor item. For years, an aged wizard has been seen traveling up and down the northwest coast of the Deerwood, performing experiments in the middle of terribly violent storms. Locals have never been certain of the if the wizard is taking advantage of the weather, or if she is causing the phenomena herself. In recent months, the wizard has not been seen. Uh, but farmers have reported a dark, roiling cloud passing through otherwise clear skies. Sounds like a good quest for a druid. Sure. Head Warden says you can go in. Be careful in there. Rather telling that they don't keep these poor soul sods up top. Now we start with the uh, frail. A curved spine twists this woman's posture forward. Her greasy hair draped over her large eyes like vines. She smiles at you. You must be visiting someone. Then, noting your appearance, she adds, A friendly visit, I hope. What do you know about this Animancer Azo? Oh, I like him very much. Many Animancers could care less about their patients. Look at us like vermin for their experiments. The Master Azo treats us like humans, even the very sick. You can tell he does this to help people. He's helped me understand a great deal about myself. I know he's done the same for others. It's too bad what they did to him. He hides it well, but I know he's still affected by it. What happened to Azo? Frail's eyes dart back and forth, and her voice lowers to just above a whisper. They don't like to talk about it, but there was an accident. He was said to be one of the brightest in Deerwood. That his reputation here, and that sorry, that was his reputation here, and that was what brought me to seek treatment. People say it was Ego that drove him to try and solve the legacy, but that's hogwash. Even if he was a bit of a showman. He loves his homeland. He thought he could help. He wasn't one to speak of his work. Suspected his colleagues might have tried to steal it. But he once told me that he had figured out a way to create a soul. Not a soul exactly, mind you. How did he put it? A proxy, I think he called it. Had some machine that drew energy out of the very ether. Can you imagine? The point is, it was going to help with the legacy. It was going to make Hollowborn into something easier to love and care for. Gods know, that's something we need. Do you know what they call those empty little babies in Andra's gift? No, tell me. They call them buoys, because so many of them are found floating face down in the water. These are mad times. Anyway, Master Azo had scheduled a public demonstration of his work in Copper Lane. He was so excited. But then the next day, he's locked in his office. Running away visitors, I heard. And he stopped seeing patients. I don't know exactly what happened. I don't have the heart to ask him. I'm glad they're letting him treat people again. Do you know where I might find Azo? I think I've seen him around today. Have you checked the laboratory? It shares a wall with his office. He's been spending most of his time there lately. Have any of the patients here been acting unusually? Well, there's Baxita, who relives a murder she committed more than five lifetimes ago. Idleman, who they say only half is, who they say only has half a soul. 
and who was found collecting the faces of others because he believed his own to be a false one. Graham. He speaks in a language no one understands. It wails at night sometimes. Different from their normal behavior, I mean. Well, yes, I suppose. But nothing they didn't volunteer for. Mastrazo let us know that a number of patients in the North Ward had volunteered for a new therapy and would be escorted to his laboratory to receive treatment. The North Ward has our most troubled cases. I'm glad some of them have chosen to get help. It seems to me it's gotten quieter over there since it started. It's Graham I see them taking in the most. He struggles, but he always was a bit of a wild one. Would I be able to visit the North Ward? I'd like to keep them separate. I don't know that I've seen the guards allow a visitor. Just Master Azo. You might ask him. He's very sympathetic. Why are you in here? Behind her hair, her cheeks flush. I don't want to say. You'll think less of me. I'm listening. These last few years haven't been kind to me. They haven't been kind to anyone, really. I try not to think of it as personal. I lost my husband and both boys in the Saints' War. My daughter. The legacy took her before she was ever mine. I may do. What else can you do? I moved into a tiny place in Andre's Gift. Got by mending clothes and on the kindness of strangers when I had to. I was surviving and the gods were watching over me. I could live with that. Then one day this noble woman comes in, wants his fancy gown fixed. Gorgeous thing. The shade of blue I'd never seen before. Only I had. I looked at it. And it reminded me of something. I had what they call an awakening. I remembered being a noble woman myself in another life. People doting over me. Men doting over me. Me. The best food. The most beautiful home. All the things you'd never dare to dream of. They were mine. It was poison knowing that. All those things I had done, I'll never have in this life. Sorry, all those things I had that I'll never have in this life. Oh, I can't read today. It did something to me. My food started to taste rotten. The walls of my little room seemed to close in around me. I stopped being able to sleep in my own bed. So I came here. It was that or break into an estate and start ordering servants around. It seems like such a silly thing to worry about. You don't have to tell me. But I can't get past it, and I start to wonder, did the gods choose this life for me? And if so, what terrible thing uh, must I have, have done to deserve it? And maybe the gods took offense to your overindulgence. Frail sighs. Maybe they did. I wish I had known back when I was a noble. Maybe I've done things differently. Farewell. Alright, I'm going to call the episode here. In the next one, we'll continue exploring the sanitarium. See if we can't access the North Ward. I will speak to Azo, of course. But for now, thanks for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next one.